What's up everyone, it's Caddy with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the markets. Tomorrow, we've got the CPI most important inflation numbers coming out. So bright and early, I will be live to cover those numbers at 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm going to go over the expectations today. And I'm also going to break down some very interesting and useful data points for S&P 500 going back as far as 1933. So we're going back over 90 plus years to better understand market breadth indicators and technical indicators as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If you do, please make sure to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, I would really appreciate it. And uh, it kind of helps the algorithm push this video out to other people who might be interested as well. And uh, again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you want to join. Uh, you do get access to all the spreadsheets that I'm going over. In just a minute, I'll go over the new spreadsheets that we are adding constantly. This is all macro data that's going to help you better make decisions when it comes to investing. And of course, you'll be able to access all the 40 plus videos and lectures that are only for members uh, right now and Discord channels as well with trade ideas and alerts and everything's going to be included with market discussion channels where you can engage with over thousand global traders uh, from all over the world. So link's going to be down below. There is a 16% annual discount that's also available uh, till the end of this month. So when it comes to the markets, uh, very, very flat days. There's not a lot of movement. We've got the Dow Jones here up over 16 basis points, S&P flat, NASDAQ slightly down a little bit over 22 basis points. Economists embrace the notion of a, quote, no landing for the economy in 2024. So ever since the pandemic started to lose its grip on the economy in 2022, fears of a recession have waxed and waned. Most of 2023 was spent awaiting the downturn. And with less than two more months left in this calendar year, these concerns have naturally shifted to 2024, uh, but gradually a new outlook has emerged that asks why must there be a landing at all, right? It's possible that we stay in the air, we don't land at all, and we continue to take off from there. In other words, growth continuing to push higher. And this view is the consensus forecast from 34 economists surveyed by Philadelphia Fed and released Monday. And uh, the survey of professional forecasters is the oldest quarterly survey of macroeconomic forecasts in the U.S., having started in 1968. And they said in the, in the survey, and I quote, the outlook for the U.S. economy looks somewhat better now than it did three months ago. And we also did learn that the uh, real GDP grew at 4.9% in the third quarter, and they are expecting the real GDP to increase 2.4% rate this year, slowing only marginally to 1.7% rate in 2024. In other words, there are no expectations for a recession as well. However, I will point out that in the past, whenever there is any type of soft lending scenario or a no landing scenario, oftentimes the market looks at the recency bias, which is to say that the economy continues to be strong, the labor market's tight, um, but it doesn't look at the underlying things that are now shifting, which is weakening in the labor market, interest rates staying higher for longer, which obviously could put, put an impact on the overall economy eventually with the, with a lag, right? So Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve also did mention that, uh, that the, a lot of the higher interest rates come with a lag as well. Now, tomorrow is the big day. CPI numbers coming out bright and early at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Like I said, I will be live at 8 a.m. Eastern to cover those inflation numbers. And retail sales and PPI numbers come out the day after tomorrow. So on Wednesday, we've got the PPI numbers and the retail sales, uh, you know, manufacturing index, business inventories, um, and I think the Fed's balance sheet on Thursday, along with initial claims on Thursday as well. This right here is the consensus for tomorrow. 0.1% is what we are expecting. Prior number was 0.4. On a year year basis, headline expected to moderate significantly from 37 down to 3.3%. And core CPI, when you exclude for food and energy, month over month, 0.3%, and it's expected to stay steady at 4.1%. So that's the big thing, right? 4.1%, it's expected to stay where it is and not really drop under 4%, which could actually end up being the bull case scenario, which I'll go over in one of my other videos as well. Now, when it comes to the markets today, we did see, uh, again, the S&P 500 basically flat on the day, so not really going anywhere. But the leading uh, indicators or the sectors were energy up over 0.71%. Healthcare pushing up 0.57%. We did have consumer staples and discretionaries also pushing higher 0.37 and 0.29%. Respectively, technology did struggle a little bit. So IT was down. Real estate and utilities being the biggest loser on the day down over 1.24%. With materials and financials and comm services, which again includes your metas and your Googles, also down about 0.2% here on the day. Now, I do want to highlight some notable buys and sells from insiders over the last week. So I do want to point out to MasterCard 
chart over here and you'll notice that we did see uh, close to 200 million dollar worth of buying from MasterCard. Actually, this is insider selling. So this was insiders basically selling close to 200 million dollars worth of MasterCard stock. And we did have Meta all the way down here. 35.3 million dollars a little bit coming from jennifer newstead and a little bit coming from mark zuckerberg actually majority of that coming from mark zuckerberg of 35.48 million and and uh reed hastings also selling 35 million dollars worth of netflix uh in the last one week as well now when it comes to top notable buys we did have exxon mobil getting picked up by uh, jeffrey ubin exxon mobil group here 26 and a half million dollars uh in total value bought in the last week for Exxon Mobil. Now this right here was the heat map. So we did have Tesla with a very nice sharp recovery pushing up over 4.22%. Eli Lilly pushing up over 25 So healthcare medical devices uh, slightly moving higher with NVIDIA slightly up. Microsoft, Apple, AMD. We had, uh, you know, Broadcom, Intel, all these sectors and including utilities, real estate and financials struggling here on the day. So this right here was the entire market. So very, very flat. Not a lot of activity. Of course, tomorrow is going to be pretty volatile. At least that's what the expectations would be. This right here is the overall uh, daily chart where you've got a little bit of that sort of bell curve where we did have few sectors sort of pushing higher, other sectors basically selling off. In the last one week, again, we had a lot of sectors uh, kind of on the green, some sectors on the red, so a little bit of a split market. And in the last one month, also a bit of a split market where we haven't really seen a lot of market participation from other sectors or a broad participation, so to speak. It's only been technology and comm services, which have been driving the markets higher uh, in the last week and month as well. Now, natural gas prices, we got heating oil, platinum, lean hogs, gasoline, copper, canola, all pushing higher with volatility slightly down about 67 basis points and Bitcoin just over 36,500, Ether just over $2,000, really just moderating at those prices at the moment. Now, in terms of valuations, if you take a look at some of the sectors, so comm services uh, still quite reasonable on a forward price earnings basis at just under 17. Industrials are also low at 16. And then, of course, we've got other sectors such as energy, financials, materials, and utilities also trading at quite reasonable to low multiples under 15. Uh, and then, of course, we got technology, which is all the way over here. Uh, that is sitting at well over 23.3 price earnings multiple on a forward basis at almost a two times peg ratio as well. What you'll notice is that even though um, utilities and materials have a low price earnings multiple on a forward basis, their peg ratio is really, really high, meaning that their growth rates are so low. Um, compared to their earnings that even at 14.5 or 13.3 levels, uh, their their peg ratios are really high, meaning that even at such low multiples, uh, they can be considered as overvalued or expensive because the growth rates are really low. Energy, on the other hand, or even financials could be considered as somewhat opportunistic sectors to look into, uh, but then communication services with the likes of Meta and Google with a 1.15 peg ratio does suggest that there's opportunity there as well, uh, but technology, of course, with almost a two times peg ratio, real estate I will ignore because it does kind of operate with a funds from operations as opposed to earnings. So that's not a multiple that we can go off of. And defensives, somewhat expensive at 17.6 peg uh, P ratio and a two and a half times uh, peg ratio as well. So on a growth adjusted basis, it does look a little bit more on the expensive side. So energy financials on a peg ratio seem a little bit more opportunistic along with comm services, reasonably priced. Uh, technology, I would argue, is again a little bit more on the higher side considering that we have already pushed higher and this market has become a little bit more overbought. Now going over to some of the more important statistics and data points and before I jump into the technicals for the market, I really want to help you understand what each of these spreadsheets basically entail and I highly do recommend uh, if you don't already have access, definitely do check out the links down below if you want to basically get uh, you know access to all the money vest spreadsheets that we have built. I'm putting in you know a lot of time time and effort and energy into creating these spreadsheets every single day. And this is literally the tip of the iceberg because we've got a lot of ideas uh, to include as these tabs continue to grow up top, right? So we've got a lot of tabs already. So first of all, of course, the money vest intrinsic values, you get access to all the different stocks here and what my intrinsic value, my fair value is, along with some risks that we're going to highlight for each company. So that's number one. Uh, the few tabs that I've added today, number, number first is S&P 500 bear market declines, right? So this basically shows you every single bear market in the S&P 500 dating back as far as 1956. And what's the average and median decline 
and the duration of those bear markets. So in other words, 11.25 months, so almost one year is how long the average bear market lasts. And it does drop close to 30% as well. So this right here is the chart, which you can again see. And majority of the times you'll notice that we are somewhere between 20 and 40% and just under 11 months, right? So you can see majority of the dots kind of fit in this quadrant. So let me just take a quick screenshot and show you. So this right here is you know, where we spend majority of our time, uh, which is basically kind of like over here, right? So this is showing us between 20 and 40% declines. And also between five and 10 months is where majority of those bear markets end up being. And very rare occasions do we last a little bit longer than 20 to 30 months. Um, and then also, again, majority of the times we are actually between 20 and 40%, uh, percent, right? So this right here is pretty much the area that we spend most of our bear markets, uh, very rarely do we drop down further over 50, 60 percent. This, again, I'm assuming is going to be 2008, 2009, uh, you know, the, the great inflation of 1970s and 80s as well. So this spreadsheet shows us that. Um, and then, of course, if you come over to the RSI reads, this is something that I'm actually super proud of because I went back as far as 1930s. Uh, so this is over 90 plus years worth of data. And what this basically shows us is the reading of the RSI, the Relative Strength Index for S&P 500 on a daily time frame. And the current read is 61.82. This is where the RSI is on the S&P. And we're in the 71st percentile rank, which is very, very normal uh, range to be in. The average is 53.7. So we are certainly a little bit higher than the average. The median is 54. So once again, we're a bit higher on, uh, you know, compared to the median. The minimum, or in other words, the least it's 11 and the maximum it's ever been, it's over 90, right? So both of these are oversold and overbought levels, which obviously was a huge buying opportunity when the RSI was at 11 and it was definitely a selling opportunity when the RSI was at over 90. Uh, right now we're at 61.82. But this chart shows us where we are in the percentile. So, you know, we're somewhere between 63 and 54, obviously. So that's why we're somewhere between 75 and 50 percentile. So that's why we are at 71.64 percentile. Super, super useful information. And this is going to obviously fluctuate and change as time goes on. Finally, if you come over to volatility, we are at 14.8 right now, a little bit under 15 and 30.87 percentile is where we are. This is also a very normal occurrence. Uh, anything under 10 and anything over 30 is when we start to make real decisions when it comes to trading and, and opening up to those opportunities in the market. Because because look, this spreadsheets, what they're really telling us are tail events. Tail events are sort of like that upper and lower tail, right? So if you look at the bell curve, uh, we're looking for rare events. We're looking for tail events because that's where majority of the money is made, right? Majority of the money is not made during the average amount of times. It's made when either the sky is falling apart or there's a lot of greed and euphoria taking over, right? So in other words, when there is a recession, there's a bear market or when there's a significant bull market and everything's going up and there's a bubble, right? That's Those are the tail events and that's where majority of the money is made. And these charts and these spreadsheets are showing us exactly that, right? It's basically go going over historical data and giving us very actionable percentiles to take advantage of. So where we are right now are very normal circumstances from a volatility standpoint, from an S&P market breadth standpoint, from a percentage of stocks running above below their moving averages standpoint. So there's not a lot of action that's warranted at the moment. And as I've mentioned before, uh, trading is very reactive. So we're not, we're not here to make predictions, but instead look at the data, assess the data that's on hand currently and, and basically understand the risk and reward opportunities that present themselves uh, in the present today instead of trying to predict the tomorrow. So when it comes to the S&P, Still trading about 4,400, so kind of, you know, held up really well, very nicely. So if you come over to the S&P 500 valuation, which is another tab, you'll notice that we close at 44.11. These, uh, these are updated automatically, so 44.11.54. Uh, and the valuation, if you come across, we're looking at 19.61. That's where we are. Uh, so again, you can see 19.61 with the earnings yield sitting at over 5.1% for the S&P 500, which is kind of comparable with the bond yield. So if you come over to US, uh, I don't know, Let's just do one year, see where it's at. It's uh, sitting at just over 5.38%. So that's actually higher than the S&P 500's uh, forward one-year yield, right? Earnings yield. So on a risk-adjusted basis, uh, the stock market, the equity market, still a little bit unattractive relative to bonds and fixed income. Uh, but investors are still willing to pay for it because they do expect the actual growth in earnings to be a little bit higher than what uh, what the data suggests. So so that's where we are at the moment. Now, going back over to the S&P 4400, uh, very, very nice kind of holding up to that support. Next target and resistance going to be a 4500. So this right here is the level that we are watching uh, for the S&P and, of course, for the Nasdaq. 
we're paying close attention to as much as uh, I think 14,000 um, is going to be that level. So 13,800 first. So this right here is going to be that level first that we're watching all the way up to 14,000 um, for the NASDAQ. So let's just come over here. I think this is a much better chart. Um, so let's take a look. So yeah, so this right here, 13,876, all the way up to 14,100 are going to be two levels to watch on the NASDAQ moving forward. Talking about Apple here and Apple uh, pulling back a little bit should not be a surprise considering that we have seen pretty sustainable you know, rallies here. I talked about the overbought conditions on the on these underlying stocks. So if you take a look at Magnificent 7, or eight companies, Tesla was the only one that that managed to push up over 4%. Uh, everything else was, you know, either down or flat on the day. That just goes to show that buying momentum has definitely weakened over the last, um, you know, couple days because of the uh, because of the overbought conditions that we're in. Technically, there is a lot of overbought uh, condition in the market right now. So next resistance target is going to be 190. So that's going to be that level to watch with a support level sitting roughly at around 179, close to $180 per share with a very, very overbought RSI and MACD for Apple. Uh, talking about Amazon, so Amazon also has continued to move higher, so overbought here on the RSI and the MACD as well, and resistance is going to be all the way up to $146 per share. So this right here is going to be that level to watch for, for Amazon, and support level is going to be staying put at close to $135, $136 um, for, for the company. So, uh, you know, very nice bounce back higher, but like I said in my previous videos, these rallies cannot go on forever. No trend will last forever, and eventually we have to be understanding and aware of the idea that just because we're pushing higher doesn't mean we're going to keep going higher. We have to understand that we're overbought and there's a possibility for us to roll over or at least see the momentum start to fade and move sideways uh, because we can't expect the markets to keep pushing higher forever, right? We have to expect to do sideways consolidations, a possibility for the markets moving forward. Uh, Tesla here, on the other hand, you know, very nice rally up over 4%. So moving back up to 223, 224. Uh, next resistance is going to be $240. So that right there is going to be that level to watch for uh, Tesla all the way up to as much as 254, $255 per share. Still very much in the context of this downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. So we're really going to be waiting for a breakout over 290s, 300s for, uh, for Tesla moving forward. So that right there is the July high. Still very much in the context of this downtrend with a little bit of a gap to fill uh, on the upside. Um, NVIDIA here on the other hand also getting up to as much as 491 so we are very much kind of getting tapped out uh, at this resistance with the rsi and the macd also approaching a very very overbought levels here and support level is going to stay put roughly at sub 400 so 398 400 is going to be that support for nvidia moving forward with a very very strong resistance sitting at 486 uh talking about advanced micro devices and amd also starting to pull back a little bit this is not a surprise this should not surprise anyone right now because we literally talked about this on friday we got the rsi macd very overbought with a you know the stock obviously hitting its resistance at 119 close to 120 uh support level is going to stay put at about 112 dollars per share all the way down to as low as low 100s for uh advanced micro devices um talking a little bit about PayPal and PayPal here also just consolidating sideways. So PayPal is not seeing a lot of action at the moment with the resistance staying put at $56, $57 uh, per share with the support level staying put at $50, $51 uh, per share as well. So a lot of consolidation, a lot of sideways price action uh, for PayPal. Um, with the resistance all the way up to $56, $57 uh, per share. Uh, Visa here. On the other hand, also moving up very nicely. We talked about the potential head and shoulders pattern with a resistance staying put at 244, 245. Uh, and of course, we are approaching a little bit of that overbought uh, condition here. Support level is going to stay put down to 228, 229 uh, for Visa moving forward. Right? So, so again, you can see kind of like we're hitting up to that resistance and how it's consolidating sideways. We're not releasing a lot of momentum, but instead it's trading um, sideways at the moment. Talking a little bit about uh, Meta platforms and Meta here on the day, also pushing higher 13 basis points. We're getting a little bit of a breakout. So definitely did put, up, put in a higher high at the moment. Uh, but again, we are approaching those overbought conditions for Meta as well. So RSI is approaching, you know, almost 64 here. MACD has been pushing higher, but the price action still has been somewhat decently strong. Uh, but we are inside this red rectangle. So it's going to be quite interesting, you know, how Meta trades after the inflation numbers tomorrow. And the next target is going to be all up to 349 to 350 per share for meta netflix here on the other hand also approaching that resistance and again we're starting to see that price action fade uh it's not a surprise rsi overbought macd's overbought so it's very normal 
for uh, for stocks to kind of roll over a little bit here uh, or at least start to go sideways with the price action fading out uh, just slightly. Google here, on the other hand, also, uh, again, not really going anywhere down 31 basis points. Next target still intact at close to 139 to $140. So that is going to be that ne next level to watch and support level is going to stay but roughly at 126, uh, 127, all the way down to as low as $115, $116 per share for uh for google um talking a little bit about microsoft and microsoft here also you can see that it's now starting to fade uh on some of the price action the bulls are starting to capitulate uh 81 basis points down here rsi magd overbought so these overbought conditions cannot last forever and eventually we can see the price action uh start to pull right back down and it's coming up to that resistance right now, 366, pretty much at an all-time high uh, at the moment as well. Uh, and then finally, we got Costco and Enphase. And Costco here was also approaching that resistance that we talked about in our previous videos. Um, but very strong, uh, you know, seems to be very strong. It is a retail week. So we do have Walmart, Home Depot and Target reporting their earnings later this week. I did a video on all three of them. Definitely do check that out. And right now we're kind of, uh, I think, hitting a new all-time high. Uh, maybe we're very close. Actually, we did. We, we did have 52-week high. Uh, on Costco, but not an all-time high. So $603 is going to be that next resistance. Uh, and right now, it does seem like to be making a new higher high and a higher low pattern for Costco. And finally, Enphase, surprisingly green on the day of over 70 basis points. Very, very oversold. So... I haven't mentioned the word oversold in this entire video up until Enphase because most stocks are overbought uh, right now. So Enphase is approaching that resistance at $70 and $79. We got a gap, a couple gaps actually to fill uh, for Enphase eventually. $92 bucks, all the way up to $100 per share is going to be Enphase moving forward. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, uh, make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. You get access to all the spreadsheets that I went over in this video, as well as the Discord channels, trade alerts, trade ideas, uh, members only private videos. There is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.